I'm Brian Scott Smith for World Risk and Insurance News. In this programme, India is concerned about contagion. The European Commission defends Solvency 2. The US considers federal crop insurance and in a RIN TV exclusive, the senior member of the UK Parliament's Treasury Select Committee discusses UK regulation. All this and more from the online video news network for the global insurance community. You're watching World Risk and Insurance News. We begin with a look at the international news affecting the insurance industry. The annual economic survey of India was presented in Parliament by Finance Minister Pranab Mukherjee. The survey says interlinkages between the insurance and banking sectors are a matter of concern, with many insurance companies being part of financial conglomerates. The survey suggests firewalls be built in order to prevent financial contagion from one sector to another in times of stress. The European Commission is defending Solvency II against criticism following recent threats of relocation by Prudential in the UK and Aegon in the Netherlands. The Commission said it fundamentally disagrees that Solvency II leaves insurers with no choice but to leave the EU. The Commission insists that Solvency II will improve the international competitiveness of insurers, not undermine it. That said, last week, European lawmakers apparently amended the Solvency II capital burden for insurers just in time for a key vote this coming week. In a related story, Hanover Re is planning to become a European public limited company with Solvency II implementation planned for January 2013. The move provides Hanover Re with the flexibility to relocate within the EU if it sees it as advantageous. And now, in the second part of Elliot Lane's exclusive interview with David Ruffley, senior member of the UK Parliament's Treasury Select Committee, he discusses a new insurance regulatory body and who he thinks should lead it. Here are highlights of that interview. As a member of the Treasury Committee, you have been critical of the FSA's role, especially concerning PPI, and accusations it was hands-off rather than hands-on during the economic crisis. Do you think the new prudential regulatory regime would do any better? I have severe uh, doubts about this. We're going to have a Bank of England, a central bank that doesn't just set interest rate policy now. It is now going to be the regulator for the first time in a very long time of the UK insurance industry and the PRA is going to be a subsidiary of the Bank of England. My committee and the British Parliament is going to have to watch the Bank of England very closely to make sure they don't make bum calls and give the industry bum steers on regulation of UK insurance. Now this uh, new regulation for insurance in the UK uh, will not be kicking in until the end of this year, the beginning of next, but it's coming very fast. By the end of this year there'll be a new insurance regulator. Let's make sure that they are properly experienced with the best expertise and the market experience. So who do you think should run it? I don't have any objection to a new regulator, we're abolishing the FSA, a new regulator being set up, but I think there should be a specific directorate for insurance with well-known players uh, in the uh, market, maybe retired, or those with real experience of insurance regulation, maybe from uh, other jurisdictions. I have seen uh, too many parts of UK financial services uh, damaged. Uh, very much by the 0809 crisis because of bad regulation, not just greedy uh, bankers. Uh, I would hate to see, uh, simply because we uh, think the Bank of England can regulate everything, I'd hate us to have non-specialists uh, looking and overseeing at the uh, uh, UK insurance industry market. I worry we don't have expert regulators, we need some. You can see the rest of this interview with David Ruffley by visiting our on-demand library. The U.S. Senate Agriculture Committee is considering the expansion of federal crop insurance as part of a 2012 farm bill. Supporters say crop losses due to extreme weather in the U.S. last year cost taxpayers a record $10 billion and all the losses are not in. Here are highlights of the Senate testimony outlining the crop insurance program. The challenge we all face is how to draft a farm program that provides a strong, consistently viable safety net that protects farmers against crippling revenue declines, whether caused by falling markets or, mo or Mother Nature. Continuation of a multi-legged stool remains the best approach for providing a fair and effective safety net, which should consist of a strong crop insurance program, continuation of the current marketing loan provisions, and a catastrophic revenue loss program. 
Because the deep loss program would take some of the risk off the table for crop insurance providers, individual policies would be re-rated with crop insurance policy premiums paid by farmers decreasing by 9 to 22 percent per year, every year, regardless of the payout under the deep loss program. Conceptually, our proposal can cover all specialty crops that have crop insurance available, but we thought it best to learn to walk before we run. To summarize and close, our deep loss proposal is one leg of a three-legged safety net that includes existing crop insurance and marketing loan programs. It protects farmers from deep systemic risk from weather or markets and thus eliminates the need for ad hoc disaster assistance. It provides to farmers crop insurance premium reductions of 9 to 22 percent each and every year in addition to any indemnity payments. It would deliver policies through private crop insurance providers with payments occurring at the same time as other indemnity payments. And it is a fiscally responsible package that provides taxpayers and America's farmers with the maximum buying for the buck. Thank you for the opportunity to present our views. We look forward to working with this committee to craft a new farm bill that meets the future needs of America's farmers and ranchers. If you'd like to see more of the Senate testimony by the President of the American Farm Bureau, go to our on-demand library. That's it for now. I'm Brian Scott-Smith reporting from New York. Join us next time for more world risk and insurance news here on RIN TV.